So observe that y is going to be 1 over x squared because it's 1 over an integrating factor. And then we have our constant of integration, which came from like another step here. And then plus the antiderivative of, so check it out, it's alpha of x times b. So let's see, b here is 1 over x times e to the x. So if we multiply that by x squared, that's going to cancel the 1 over x down to this thing right here. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so this comes from so this is, so alpha times b, so let's see, b is one over x times e to the x, so we have x squared times one over x times e to the x. So now, if you recall from last time, we did the antiderivative of x times e to the x using integration by parts. We did that tabular method for a shortcut. I'm just gonna write down what we did yesterday because I don't wanna do the same integration example of yesterday. So this is y equals one over x squared, we have a constant plus x e to the x minus e to the x. So again, like I just said, this thing that I'm overlining in yellow, the antiderivative is, is this bit that I'm overlining in yellow by the thing that we did exactly yesterday. And then, I don't know, if you're psyched, you can multiply by, through by the um, 1 over x squared and then rearrange. I would probably do that, but you know, it doesn't really matter. So then plus a constant over x squared. And there we've got like our final, most general solution is that. So, so the thing here, I guess that's important is this part right here, which is if, if you've got an exponential of a number times a natural log or really something like that, you always have to turn it into something that's just a natural log by using logarithm rules. That is the only way that the exponential and the logarithm will be able to cancel each other out.